Hi, everyone. Welcome to my studio here on Chappaquiddick. And I've got some more books, what we're reading right now. And so I've got five books here to show you. Um, my absolute favorite is the last one, so I'm going to make you wait for that. But let's go ahead and get started. I'm going to show you some of the books I've been uh, reading this winter. Um, some of them are older reprints. Other ones are just, you know, ones that are new to me or very recently uh, released. And the first one is this one called Creative Illustration by Andrew Loomis. Now, Andrew Loomis is an extremely well-known illustrator. And this book was originally put out in 1947. But it is a wonderful book if you're into drawing or actually art of any sort. A good refresher on just how to create a story and a narrative. So the style, of course, he's working in is, is the style from the 1940s. And there's just, there are some really wonderful pages. Here's one, uh, well, he has a whole section on composition where he talks about how he goes about uh, putting a composition together. There are numerous um, pages in here about uh, drawing the figure, uh, in, in this case, in pen and ink. And also, I think what's really interesting is a lot of his work he was doing using photography. Um, that, you know, so he's using imagination and photography together. Uh, a good section on color and, um, and painting and, and drawing in color. So we have some of these sort of classic looking scenes right here. And this book is just full of information. So even if you feel, oh, I'm a fine artist, I'm not an illustrator, I don't need that information, I would read this anyway, because this harkens back to that era that I'm always talking about, where drawing and using the imagination was really common in the arts. Uh, we have, have moved further and further away from that with a reliance on, on photographic reference. And as you know, I think photo reference is fantastic, but also our imagination is really fantastic. So he does a, a lot of work talking about, you know, facial characteristics and expressions, what actually makes uh, expressions work. And uh, there was one, I think I, let's see if I went ahead and, he did a number of other, just sort of interesting general pages on sketching. I can't find the one that I'm looking for right at this second. But where he's talking about, let's see, let me just page past here, see if I can find it. Ah, so he's, he talks about just sort of general doodling and sketching and such, um, you know, of just out of your head. And he says something that I just love. Your scribbles are more original than your camera. So that's something to keep in mind as is adding creative illustration by Andrew Loomis to your art, uh, art shelf. All right, so the next person we move to is someone quite a bit different. So this is Picasso, Picasso and the Art of Drawing. Now, I really like this book, especially if you are interested in um, abstraction and sort of wondering, you know, you might be taking classes or, or doing classes with me, the Summer of Art ones, uh, you know, where we start off with a lot of realism, a lot of talking about how to actually draw things in real life, and wondering how that gets you to the abstraction that you're looking for. So reading a book like this, Picasso and the Art of Drawing, is really helpful because Picasso was born in 1881, I believe. Um, so if you think about art in that time, abstraction really was, was not what was going on. And here is a self-portrait that he painted, uh, he drew in... Um, either 18, 1899 or 1900, you know, very, very much what we would think of, you know, as realism. And it's fascinating to me just to go through, and I won't show you all the pages because, of course, there's so much, to see him, you know, go through the various different stages of, of walking away from that super realism and moving further and further towards his idea of abstraction and actually, I should say his ideas of abstraction, because he had so many ways that he liked to draw. So this is a drawing he did, for example, in, in 1970. So what a difference, right? What a difference over 70 years. Anyway, a fantastic book, Picasso and the Art of Drawing. And this is by Christopher Lloyd. All right, the next book is a tome. Uh, it's really big and heavy, but it's so great. It's called Art Equals, and it's by the Metropolitan Museum of Art, Discovering Infinite Connections in Art History. So as you can see, big book. Um, 
In fact, I'm going to put it down a second <laughs> because it's so heavy. So what this book is great for, if you have always wanted to have a better understanding of art history, but, you know, when you start to look around for an art history textbook or something like that, you know, they're even bigger than this. I mean, we've been creating art as long as we have, have had a history or a prehistory. People, since they could make a mark, have been making marks. So how do you encompass all of that, right? Not really possible. But what I like about this book is it divides uh, art, artistic expression from all around the world into different many categories. So this is not an exhaustive way to learn about art history. What this is, it's a fantastic hors d'oeuvre buffet. So you can sort of select, uh, you know, by these many categories, um, where they have placed art from different eras and different countries together side by side. There's a little bit of description with each one, and it sort of whets your appetite for looking a little bit further. The, uh, the book is divided by material, for example, um, you know, paper, uh, iron, um, bronze, whatever it happens, mosaic, what happens to be. It's then divided by subject matter, you know, people, food, et cetera, et cetera, and then by sort of the artistic categories that we think of, you know, Baroque, Renaissance, that kind of thing. So let me show you a, a couple of pages if I can manage to get this. So this book, it opens up like this, and it has this a huge fold-out timeline, <laughs> which I'm not going to fold out right now. Then it has, oops, let's see if I can do this right. <laughs> I knew this is going to be fun. Then it has a huge cover. And then all of the pages of the book are, are within it. So I, I've marked a few. Let me try, <laughs> let me try to get these, these open. Let's see. So here's an example for, uh, under like the metal category. And you can see here, so what we have is metal, pieces of, of metal sculpture, uh, you know, various different things have been made from different countries throughout the ages and some description at the bottom. Then we move along, uh, for example, to, to mosaic. Likewise, you know, mosaics from different countries, uh, different ages. Oops. Moving into the, the different styles, we have Baroque and Bauhaus next to each other on these two pages. So really an interesting opportunity to perhaps see some artwork that you haven't seen before, maybe be introduced to some new artists. Here are the pages, uh, for example, on the Bronze Age. There's some really wonderful examples in here. And it goes on and on. Um, I'll show you two more. Um, here's a, a selection of, of artwork to do with daily life from different countries and different eras. And oh, what did I pick for the last one here? So this is a book that you don't just sit down and read or take to bed because it'll kill you. <laughs> but it is a book that you, you know, sit with on your lap on the sofa and sort of thumb through um, in, a, in a casual manner because it, it has so much interesting stuff. The, the photos are fantastic. Uh, the information is very descriptive and, and good. So this is a funer, funer, funerary art <laughs> through the ages. And if you are looking for a way to sort of get an overview of thousands of years worth of art and, and have a, maybe a better sense of some eras, or if there's a particular era that you just wanted to see a few examples, maybe get some more names, I would highly recommend the Metropolitan Museum of, Museum of Art, Art Equals, uh, Discovering Infinite Connections in Art History. And what I like about that timeline that I showed you at the beginning, the, the fold-out one, is it sort of it shows you all the sort of the parallels as you move through the different countries, what was going on in the, in the art world at that time. Because we have a tendency to, to segment everything and not think about the parallels, how exploration you know, might have affected how art changed from one country to another. So this is just a really, really wonderful art history book. So moving on from that to a book on drawing. And this is called Contemporary Drawing by Margaret, Margaret Davidson. Now, this has been out for a while. I think it came out in 2011. But if you're, if you're interested in drawing and you're at that point where, OK, you've got the techniques, you understand about that, you sort of know how to put a drawing together, but maybe you're looking for some ideas on how to think about drawing and how to approach it and why you're going to make certain decisions about what you're putting where. 
Margaret Davidson's book is a really thoughtful take on art. And one of the things I like about it, um, and this is sort of like an odd thing to like, but she has the bit about the materials and stuff at the back. The, you know, the pencils and the paper and this, that, and the other. And I like that because I think, you know how it is, the way I teach, for example, I start with composition. I don't start with the details of how to shade a cube and all of that. That's all important and everything, but I, I like the bigger idea of, the, of what captures you and then dealing with the detail of what goes in it later. And Margaret Davidson's approach to drawing is sort of the same way. She's looking for the bigger idea first and then narrows down the how to do it and what to do it with. So I selected a few pages to show you in, in here. So for example, she's got some, a lot of very interesting modern examples of, uh, this one is, this uh, page is about tone that communicates form. Um, talking about you know, various different uh, kind of techniques and, and what, the, what, the, what effect it is that they uh, have. Another one is um, she, talking about the illusion of three-dimensional space and how we actually go about creating that. And throughout the book, she has lots of examples of contemporary drawing, which is another feature I think is really valuable to see what drawing looks like today. Um, this, this particular uh, section I thought was very good is about eye pathways. Um, you know, how, how you create an interesting sort of pathway through the artwork and then the many different ways it can be uh, used to do that. So this is Contemporary Drawing, Key Concepts and Techniques by Margaret Davidson. And I certainly would recommend, whoops, can you see that proper, properly? There we go. I would certainly recommend adding this one to your art shelf as well. All right, last but certainly not least, is a book I just discovered that I think it only came out in November of last year. So it's hot off the presses. And if you are looking for one book on botanical art and drawing plants and such, this is the one that you want. It's called Botanical Art Techniques, and it is a comprehensive guide, and they are not kidding about that. Um, it's, by, it's put out by the American Society of Botanical Artists, and it covers subject matter, watercolor, graphite, colored pencil, vellum, pen and ink, egg tempera, oils, printmaking, and more. <laughs> and let me tell you, this is such a great book. Oh my goodness. So my interest in botanical drawing is, you know, I don't really have the patience for the super formal stuff, but I really admire it. I just like to draw and uh, celebrate plants and flowers and all of that stuff in general. So this book is not just about that very detailed scientific approach, although there's a lot, a lot in here that applies. But it also sort of goes to the, to the edges of that, you know, uh, just beautiful botanical drawing of all sorts. I'll show you a few examples. So there's a lot of how-to, a great deal of how-to, um, covering all of those different subject matters. So this in particular, I think, is, the, is a uh, pen and ink section. And there are examples of, of finished art, uh, discussions of process, different artists are contributing um, different, uh, you know, different sections according to the media that they particularly like, with their hints on how they set things up, what the materials are that they use, uh, what their studio setup is like. And one of the things that I love about this entire book, you can see here, uh, there's some description underneath this image. And what it tells you is, you know, the name of the, of the plant, the Latin name of the plant, what the uh, medium was, this was watercolor on paper, the size, uh, who it's by, and then most importantly, the number of hours it took to complete. So this illustration, which is 18 by 24, took 86 hours to complete. And I think that this is so valuable because as people have heard me mention numerous times, it's very frustrating to be an artist that wants to do excellent work in a world that wants to operate, you know, at 30 second intervals, two minute intervals, 20 minute intervals. Um, you know, 86 hours is not something that people are going to sit around and, and necessarily, you know, wait for or, or watch on Instagram. And I really want to encourage artists to take the time. If it takes 86 hours, if it takes 200 hours, does it really matter? 
it's your involvement in this process and your attempt to create excellence that's really important. And excellence is whatever it is to you. And one day it could just be, hey, it's whatever I get done in 20 minutes or an hour. And another day you might want to sit down and actually explore a subject matter to greater detail. So uh, let me see if there's some, there's a section at the back I also wanted to. So they go through all the various different painting, journaling, different materials you can use, this, that, and the other. Oh, yeah. So there's an, a, a section also on printmaking and a, a few really good pages, for example, on, on etching, on doing different types of etching. So if you have any interest in botanical art techniques at all, there is no way you shouldn't have this book. This, this book is just going to be a really great resource for you and so inspiring. And as it is right now, uh, the middle of winter when I'm recording this, and for those of you whose New Year resolution had something to do with improving your art, um, try perhaps looking at one of these books. Learn a little bit more about art history, perhaps a little more about Picasso or another artist. Uh, similarly, see how they incorporated drawing into, into their life. Um, what else? We had the illustration book, uh, Andrew Loomis, and, and his way of approaching uh, just sort of narrative and putting things together uh, to make a, a drawing overall. Um, we had... We had Margaret Davidson and, and her book, um, how to put a little more thought into how you're approaching uh, your drawing. And was that, I think that covered it. That covered it. So there's, there are five books that we are reading now. I hope you enjoy them, and I hope they um, prompt you, if nothing else, to go and look for some great books on art for your own shelf. Thanks so much. Look forward to talking to you next time.